Okay. Um, as we discussed with um, with John, I was working out what was my actual first computer because I remember having a TI994A that I actually wrote some software and sold to a shop down in uh, on George Street. Um, but then there was also a Commodore 64. There was a Spectrum that I had problems with the um, with the power. My fridge, my parents' fridge, would cycle every once in a while. Every time it did a cycle, the Spectrum would reboot. And <laughs> so I had actually got a refund on that one and gone to Commodore 64. But I was thinking about it. That was in like year 11, year 10. You know, the Tech One came out when I was in year nine. Yeah, you know, because it was in year eight that I first saw the Altair with the switches, which I was completely unimpressed with. That. Is that really? Is that what computers do? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, but then there was another, um, we, ha we have yet to figure out what it is, it was a, a black sided metal case with a white kind of very sharp angle fold keyboard connected to just a standard TV um, and uh, a mate of mine showed me like basic and within I think maybe 10 lines of code he moved an at symbol and said you know this could be the start of a Space Invaders, because Space Invaders have been out by then. A Space Invaders game and showed it moving across the screen. And I went, oh, oh, oh now, the, now I know what a computer can do. That's kind of thing. So, but that was in 82. So I figured out that the Tech 1 was my um, very first computer. Because it was very cheap, actually, as well. Only $100. And that's it there with the 8212s. Um, and, you know, I, I actually laboriously programmed all kinds of things. I had an 8x8. LED display, and I coded a little maze on it and saved it in the NV RAM uh, board that I had as well, kind of thing. So, um, however, very quickly, very quickly, I don't know if anyone had these originals, but these these keys suck. They're just absolutely terrible. So right the, from the pneumatic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so. All the way is back. Is this going to turn into a gripe session? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's going to be a massive gripe session. That's what everyone knows me for. So all the way back when I was a lad, um, I decided that I had to have a mechanical key. I made this back in 1983. You know, cut out of aluminium. I don't know where I bought the switches from. Made labels on there, and like that's the port there um, that you connect it into, and it was much nicer to type on that. Forty years later. Um, Basically, what happened was, you know, I, I thought, well, I'll get to the bit what started me uh, making the 1G. Um, but basically, I thought one of the things that I had to have, there was no way I was going to put up with crappy keys like that. And even um, the tactiles that most people use nowadays. Uh, Not much better. Are, yeah, the 12 mil tactiles. Better than these SpongeBob things. Um, but... You know, still not wonderful. So one of the things that I said had absolutely had to happen on the 1G was actually these mechanicals, and I was hunting around for them, and I bought various different sorts. I ended up with the Gator on both profiles, and I put up on the Facebook group um, a very cryptic 3D render, um, and said, first person that guesses what this is uh, Gets 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 a prize. Gets gets a copy. Or gets a free sample of it. The board I'm printing. I'm getting boards printed, along with um, you know what it is. And stand up, Ian. Um, Mr. Ian, within like seconds, come around, come around, Ian, because you 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 and I have talked endlessly about the various things about the design of the one um, G. So um, so yes, that that was the I, I could probably call the cherry overlay. We called it the Cherry Overlay originally, yeah. um, and it was going to come out for the 1D, uh, but then it sort of morphed into the new keyboard for the 1G instead. Exactly. So the 1G, the, the, so that's an overlay. Basically, you can see it's a kind of like your idea of the sandwich board, um, and it actually just you just have to take off all the crappy keys and uh, put that on, and it makes a 1D with a nice keyboard. Um, but that was the start of it. Actually, what the 1G. Um, started from was back two years ago. The, um, we had an opportunity to redesign the Tech One. Um, the Tech One D had been out for many years and etc. And we got an opportunity, and uh, John and myself and Craig Jones were involved, and we were in the discussions about making the next Tech. What should we? What should be in there? What What are we going to do? How are we going to? You know, what's the memory map? All this kind of thing. And the one thing that I, and Craig Jones, if you know, designed the uh, uh, 
um, what is it called? Southern Cross. Southern Cross. SCC. The Southern Cross. SCC, yes. And the big thing about the Southern Cross that I really liked was that he had this little magic connector here, which I dubbed the Z80 bus, but it's just the Z80 taken to IDC pins. And it's roughly the same, just so people know. It's sort of, it's come from the Mike Professor. So originally the Mike Professor had a 40 pin connector and it's, I think, pinned out much the same way. So it was copied off the SCC and has moved forward onto the, onto the tech. Exactly. But back two years ago, I said, can we have that connector? And the answer was no. And that, in a way, I can thank Jay, uh, Craig. Uh, basically, when he said no and decided to make the 1F without it, I said, I'm going to make the 1G and it will have that connector. So, um, oh, yeah. look at this. Nice. I've never actually seen one in, the, in person. Yeah, long nice. time since I've um, so that that was really the birth of the one G. The the idea of the one G started because we wouldn't have the connector, uh, the the Z eighty connector in the one F. So I went about creating bits and pieces. And I thought, what is what should be in the next iteration? Still needs to be the number one thing that I had wanted though was backward compatibility. I wanted to still have all the old ROMs be able to, including the two K versions to be able to run, but I wanted 32K and I wanted bigger ROMs like 16K, etc. and I wanted the LCD. So what, now, I am no engineer by a long shot. I'm literally just a hobbyist. Uh, everything I've learned is from the Tech One, uh, tech, tech magazines and you know, talking to various people here. So, um, so is there some feedback going on there? So, but I went about making some expansions for the 1D, including this little connector here. So I gave the 1D the Z80 bus connector with a kind of riser that you have to, it's a bit bodgy, but you have to rise the Z80 um, up. Uh, we don't have that. Um, and it gives you that, uh, that connector. So once I had that connector, then I made a, a Z yeah, X4 board, which basically gives you more of those same connectors, but so that I needed this so that as each board I made that was going to be added to the 1D to expand into the 1G, um, I needed to have make sure that they all ran together. So I made it, so the next thing was the X4 board, so that I had multiples of those Z80 connectors. Next thing was the keyboard. Keyboard, matrix thank you. Uh, the matrix keyboard was next, um, and I actually sold that as a kit everywhere. Then came the... Then came the... Uh, the LCD. I think it was the LCD. Then came the LCD. And for that, I basically took on uh, Jim Robertson's design of the DAT board. And I was absolutely stoked that the 20 by 4 LCD was the exact same pinout and everything else just needed some a little bit more smarter coding, um, but the 20 by 4 are exactly the same as the 16 by 2. So, so that was next, which again plugged into the end of the X4. Just so people know before you go on, the reason that is, um, is that the 20 by 4 and the 16 by 2 are actually using the same chipset, and the chipset itself actually supports 40 by 2 characters. On two, on two lines of 40 characters, so you can split that up any way you want. You can either use 16 by 2 on a 16 by 2, or you can stretch the two 40 by 2 lines around into 20 by 4, which is what the 20 by 4 display you does. Just so people know. So the LCD, uh, sorry, and part of the LCD is also the um, bit banging routine as well. So there's a FTDI connector inside there. So I got that tested, the LCD. Craig Hart helped me a lot there actually. Craig Hart jumped on in terms of helping me with the, um, it actually, <laughs> this actual, this LCD module actually works on the um, Southern Cross as well, just with a little flick of a switch it uses different, slightly different ports. So. Um, so he helped me with the design of that. And the last was the memory. And that was actually pretty tricky um, because um, we had to be backward compatible. To be backward compatible, I don't know what's. And your hand is too low. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay. Um, to be backward compatible, we had to have two K of ROM down, right down the bottom zero uh, at the zero address, uh, and then. Um, but 
we wanted 16k of ROM and that I wanted that to be up high because people want to do CPM or that, that all, people want to do all kinds of things with the memory down low. Um, so the way I came, what I came up with was a way of shadowing the first 2k of that 16k ROM which is at the top of the 64k memory pit and kind of trick the computer into thinking that that's what it's addressing when it's really not, it's actually addressing uh, the upper bit, the upper 16k. Um, I don't have that board here, but I made that, tested that as well, and that worked. So all I had to do was just pull it all together uh, into the 1G. Uh, I did so with a very limited beta run of only five boards. I sent them out to... Um, I <laughs> he actually had one. I did, and never got to build it. <laughs> okay, tell the story. <laughs> I had a shipment of parts stolen, funnily enough. Yeah, what's I had a shipment of parts for the original oh. tech uh, beta board stolen, one. for the beta <laughs> one board stolen uh, in post, which is the only time that's ever happened to me other than once, maybe 12 years ago. Anyway, beside the point, I never got to build the one, so that got sent back to Mark because he didn't keep a spare one uh, as a reference. Yes, which and, has come in handy actually. And I built a beta two instead. Yes. So, um, so the beta one actually, I built it very quickly. So did Craig Hart, uh, and I think there was, there wasn't too many that. Oh, Brian, oh, sorry, Brian, Brian, Brian. Yes, yeah, so Brian uh, right and there. Brian, I roped in very early on in the piece because he was going to be. I knew he he was going to write the monitor for me. He'd already done Beamon, um, and yeah, sorry for all the work, bro. Um, but yeah, it. Uh, I built the Tech One beta one, um, and he fired up first pop and mind-blowing you that just doesn't happen you know every board by the way this lcd board the x4 i had to do two runs um the keyboard one every board that i've ever printed designed and printed etc has had to go through two other iterations before it was actually right uh the tech one in the end we've had three iterations we had a beta one beta two and now the production so it still had came to three but the first one actually worked and None of the issues that we've been having have been showstoppers. Every board has actually worked. Um, iterations have been to really add a few extra features and to address a few known critical problems with yeah. compatibility between ROMs, etc. So, so um, that's um, that's really um, the, you know the, I can't think of much else to say really other than it was like it has worked out really well. Um, and really couldn't have happened without the help of people like Ian, Brian, Craig Hart, um, John. In certain, yeah, he did. He did our marketing uh, <laughs> with all the posts that he put out. Um, and let me tell you, I'm very proud that um, you know it's worked out as well as it has, has, and it's had a great reception as well. So, um, before we come off, where is Adrian? He keeps disappearing. He went out there. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll, I'll get to that. But. Um, no, that's is it. Any questions at all? Have you got any questions? I think it's we've um... this one. You've changed the uh, layout of the um, from the original to where the uh, hex digits are. Yeah. Any particular reason? Where the hex digits are. Oh, so, yeah. Is that <laughs> really? As in the keyboard layout? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting it all to fit. Yeah, that's right. another pet pet hate of mine. Is like I really di didn't like the layout of the keys because it went vertical, oh, yeah. zero was in the bottom left and then yeah, it went it vertical. vertical. I don't know yeah. if anybody can see yeah. that with yeah. that camera. Um, and I just, I, I know they did that for... the best layout. <laughs> <laughs> I know they did it for a reason because it was the easiest to... Because uh, you didn't tell me, you didn't say it during your talk, but you, you've, you know, uh, all this was done in KiCad, by the way, KiCad, KiCad, whatever, um, which I find really zen-like to work with. It's just so much fun to come up with a schematic, even if you steal it from somewhere else, find it on the web or whatever. And by the way, the keyboard, Matrix keyboard, actually, I've got um, credits to the person, Marcos, Marco, somebody rather. Um, you know, the, the people are so kind now, they put out their designs, their schematics. Um, you just copy the schematic, and you have to do the work in terms of routing it, of course. But, you know, KiCad makes it so easy. There's even auto-routers. Um, however, you know, you've got to remember that back then, they had, you had tape. Yeah. You actually had tape that you had to peel off the sticky bits yeah. and route it around, and then you had to photograph. Done that. You should have done that. No, I've never done that, thankfully. So it's, um, yeah, that's a lot of... So they obviously took the easiest route, which 
makes sense. But no, I I had to get that changed. Sorry, good question though. Um, so, is there any 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 others? Because we are running late. Sorry, everyone. Lunch took longer than anything else. So, all good.